I had one last week. Actually, that's a lie. I had one last night. What? A breakdown. Okay, so okay. <laughs> we're not really gonna talk to the camera. Yeah, yeah. All. We're talking to. I'm just gonna look into your beautiful eyes. That's it. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that why you want me to keep my glasses on? Mm-hmm. Do I make you nervous? No, I can still see through your glasses. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to know about me? That is a good question. Cause there's a lot. That I might not know yet. What do you know about me, Nani? I know that you like to bully me. That's one. That's my love language. Can, those, can you go into why you like to bully people that you do care for? No, actually, like, Wait, I really? really? I want to know. I, yeah. I don't know. I feel like everyone just takes everything so seriously. So it's like kind of like breaking that down, you know? Okay, okay. Get Got on it. a personal level. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, so say if you have. This is just for, just for me to know. Say if you know someone that's maybe not that close, should they be slightly worried if you're not building them? Look, I'm five foot. Mm -hmm. I weigh 93 pounds. I'm like the least intimidating person physically. Mm -hmm. If I'm mean to you, I doubt anyone actually takes it seriously. I mean, well, say if some people do. Say if you had that situation okay. where, okay, I don't know. I don't want to like name call people. Shout out to Kaylee, I guess. But like, say if someone that you know takes it to heart. Mm -hmm. And you just don't know it. How would you react? Oh, but I know that. Like, I read people. Okay. Like, obviously with Kaylee, I was like, I match her energy. Mm -hmm. So she's like super like sweet and outgoing and bubbly. I'm not going to be like, I hate you. I get along with like pretty much everyone mm -hmm. because I can kind of take the vibe of like the group or the individual and then kind of transform myself or change myself to kind of fill that. Okay. To match it. That does make sense. Yeah. Have you been called a chameleon before or just someone that is good yeah. at matching other people's energy like very adaptable okay i mean i moved around a lot i went to what 13 different schools 13 yeah. like actually and i lived in 11 countries growing up oh, i didn't know that you grew up in a lot of countries tell, tell me yeah. about forget the camera oh you don't know that i actually don't so please tell me about the different countries that you lived in okay so that's 11 so it's a lot 11 so right, i first moved to azerbaijan where? Azerbaijan. It's in the Middle East. Say it again. Oil m money. Say the name. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. <laughs> yes. Azerbaijan. I'll put like the spelling. I can't even know what you're saying. You're good. Azerbaijan. It's in the Middle East somewhere. Okay, see. Um, mm -hmm. And then I moved from Azerbaijan to El Salvador. Yeah. And then I moved from El Salvador back to the U.S. So that's three. And I lived back and forth between like Colombia and the U.S. because my mom's Colombian. And then after the U.S. again, I moved to Italy, then Macedonia, then back to Italy because both of my parents were diplomats. So my mom worked in Macedonia for a year while my dad was in Italy, so it was like back and forth. And then after Macedonia, we went, where did we go? We went to India, and then from India, Kenya, Kenya, Cameroon, and then South Africa was the last place. Where my parents are right now. Here. And I came here, like, I graduated from Kenya, and then I came to UT, went to school here for three years, but I lived on and off between here and South Africa. So I'm actually, like, slightly in shock a bit, because I, I didn't even know you lived in Africa, honestly. Really? I, really, I really did not. And so, of course, how the media portrays, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say anything bad, but I can't see you live. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Okay, so, okay. I have a friend, his name's Richard, Richard Givenor, shout out to Rich, but um, he'll always like say these different jokes and stuff, like he has a pet leopard, pet hyena, like all these different things, so mm -hmm. what is what is Africa actually like compared to how the media portrays it? Um, I mean, it how depends, like, like Africa is a huge continent, first okay. of all, that's yeah, like saying all of America, like you have South true. America, you have North America, mm -hmm. right? So with Africa, like depending on who colonized which area or which country, like it's gonna be very different. Like Cameroon was colonized by the French. So they're a little bit more like, I don't wanna say like behind, but like compared to like the British colonies, they're just like light years away. Mm. So the British colonies would be like South Africa, which is very much developed and like has that like European Dutch um, feel to it. It's like especially Cape Town. But Kenya is also British, but it, I would say it's a little more like rural and then it's still in development. So people joke about like having leopards and stuff like that because the U.S. is so like closed off to the media and that to what is actually happening in the mm -hmm. world, which 
you can't blame people here for it necessarily if they've never been like exposed to it and this is all they know but then also like as a human being you know there's a whole world out there how are you limiting yourself to only the country you live in mm -hmm. um but i loved living there like it was fun i don't know what was your favorite part about living in those i guess what do you call them countries yeah mm -hmm. um is it like kenya like definitely like I actually want to know. Like, I'm genuinely yeah. interested because I just, I don't know. People have always told me, like, to take that trip, mm -hmm. either South Africa, especially. Mm -hmm. I've heard that's like a really cool place to visit. Mm -hmm. But then I have a lot of friends, like Senegal, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Nigeria, you know. Yeah. So I only know what I know from them and what they tell me. Mm -hmm. I know that I think Nigeria, Lagos, mm -hmm. it's like a really popular spot. Have yeah. you ever been there? I've never been to Nigeria because when I was there, I only went to Tanzania and Kenya on that like coast. I mean, I've been to Egypt, but you can't compare Egypt to like the rest of Africa sure. because mm -hmm. very different. Um, but even like for me with the experience of like living in Kenya, like actually the wildlife is insane because you see things here like at the zoos behind the bars, but like actually experiencing it like in the yeah, wild in their like yeah. natural environment is insane. That's something that you're only really ever going to like experience if you go there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have that in like, they have Tanzania, they have Kenya and like South Africa have like the biggest like game parks. Um, so that's really cool. I mean, living in Europe, like the culture and the food is amazing. And just like, you know, they have like that nice like work-life balance that I feel like the US doesn't have. Mm -hmm. I mean, South America, same thing. Like even my mom's Colombian, so we go there a lot and just like, the diversity because you have the coast where like a lot of the Africans that were enslaved live in that area so you have like that um, region and then you have like the city or you have where like a lot of the Spaniards like very blonde blue-eyed Colombians live you have like the mountain regions where all the co coffee is made and you also have like the indigenous and it's like just within that like the Amazons you have like so much biodiversity and like just the culture is like crazy to me and like South America as a whole like there's just so much going on there so I don't know for me it's just like every place has its own life I'm actually in, like Sabrina I'm in shock this is only because I know you already and the fact that I didn't know that you lived there mm -hmm. and so you like you already have a full-on experience of what it's like to where I can only guess no you, you know, know why I'm, I'm like a chameleon that, though because I literally that like makes sense. That grew makes up with different sense. cultures people languages like everything so like for me it's very 13 different schools. I was the new girl 13, 13 times. You know how times. hard that is, especially in like middle school and high school? Like, mm -hmm. people are ruthless. And when you're the new yeah. girl, you're the new me. Mm -mm. Is that how you develop bullying? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. It's part of my charm. <laughs> no, I'm not mean to everyone. I just like if I get that like banter vibe from you, there it is. It's banter. Banter? Bantering? Banter, babes. Banter. 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 Um, Say it again. Banter. On, on top. No, I just watched a lot of Love Island. I was <laughs> okay. Literally, love island. on that topic of Love Island, so there's wow. a show, I can't, I can't remember the name, I used to watch it with my friends, the show was called Temptation Island, I've have never, you ever I've heard, heard of it? I've heard of it, but I never watched it, so this is show, it kind of like too hot to handle? In a way, but, okay. so I personally had a hard time watching it, only because some of the contestants, they seem like so dumb, almost like, okay, I think you would like watching it. Only it's because funny. you can predict, that's what I'm saying. It's like so you're lighthearted watching it because it's like seeing people just kind of go like, eh, whatever. Like A little bit. You could, I think you know, I think the average person knows that in those TV shows, at least mm -hmm. not all of them, some of the decisions that they make are just not yeah. realistic. Do you think that you could last a season on one of those shows though? Okay, funny enough, I just applied for a <laughs> for Love Island as a joke. I did the whole application. Oh, yeah, okay. The only part I haven't done is the video. Actually, if you want to film that for me. Oh, okay. But the only reason is because I haven't been seeing one in a really long time. And I'm like, why do it for the plot? You know what I mean? I don't know if I could necessarily do like the American one, but I always want to do the British one, but then I wouldn't be able to get on because I'm not European. But I think it's so funny. Alright. I'm, I'm Do it for the plot, you never know. Because I keep hearing this phrase, do it for the plot, and I think that's the scariest part across the board for any. No, no, no. I'm Wait, gonna, what's scary about it? Uh, do it for the plot. So say, say if, I'm going to give you a scenario. Okay. You're on the show. Well, what Do you have a specific type, or should we just keep that off the record? If you're my friend, you know that I have no type. They're all the same ugly. No, I'm just kidding. 
Let's don't put that in because of my ex. Oh, wait, I know. I, I, know. <laughs> I mean, you can because, but. <laughs> I'm not going to put that in. <laughs> just... All right, so say, say it if you're on the show. Uh-huh. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking. European. Well, European. Okay. Well, no specific country. Okay. You love his accent. Uh-huh. He treats you well. Uh-huh. He's very mindful of your emotions. Uh-huh. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so you know how in the show, of course, they pair you up with somebody that you would probably like. But say... But some, yeah, some and you have to choose. Kind of like find it. That's true. But say like two, three weeks in, they purposely put somebody else... You know what I'm trying to say? Like, they oh, like the temptation thing else. where like they put yeah, someone yeah. in, but I'm purposely. vibing with someone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, do you think you will fold or not? The problem is I'm a very loyal person. Like if I like someone and I want to be with them, I like, you know, nothing else. Like mm -hmm. blinders. Like, but mm -hmm. because the whole premise of the show is to find someone and it's not that deep. Like if it was real life, like absolutely not. But it is, so that's the point. You gotta start drawing or else you don't get screen time. So do it, do it for the do plot. Do it for the plot. I, 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 but honestly, if I did like genuinely vibe with that person, yeah, then I was like, oh, I can actually see it. Like probably mm -hmm. not, but it is a game show for a reason. Yeah, that is very true. That's like, cause man, it, I had a hard time. Shout out to Jacob J. Evan, but man, I had a hard time watching those shows only because um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm thinking of flashbacks. I would watch it. And you can see people like I guess you could say like vibe, mm -hmm. get to know each other, and then they always add on another person, mm -hmm. and either someone who had oh I think I remember the preface. So how the preface would go, people would already come to the show dating someone. No, oh, that's been happening in a lot though. But they'd come to the show with the person that they're dating. Oh really? And so they're on the island together. So then oh. they would split up the two houses. They would. They would do like the girls in one house, the guys in another. Mm -hmm. And I think the rest, I can't remember. I just know they But they're they all made it. in this one, they've all are like already in a relationship mm -hmm. with someone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the difference. Because like Love, 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 Love is Blind, Love. that season just finished. Love Island is that everyone's single. So that, there's okay, a little difference okay. there. That makes in sense. that case, and I'm already dating someone, that's, what I mean. that's different. That was so hard for me to watch. Only like legitimately but if they're on that show clearly it's that's the saying. relationship isn't working that's why i just it was hard for me to watch only because forget the camera like literally yeah. only because they're going in already dating someone and, it, and it's so sad to start because like oh like he's my everything and mm. just to like you know what i'm saying you leave with somebody else and when that whole person that you probably spent they put the amount of years yeah they've been with the person and i can't watch it my friends are just giggling for me, it's like within the year, you know, you know, you're going to marry that person. So if they're on that show or you've been with someone for that long. I mean, yeah, there might not be the right moment because of financials or whatever. But like, you know, you're going to marry that person. Why are you putting yourself in that situation? Mm -hmm. like, you clearly aren't on the same page and you clearly don't really care about that person. True. I can. I just do you have any recommendations for me to watch? Because I need more stuff to watch. Like in general. actually like good stuff or like reality TV stuff. Maybe not so reality because I don't know if I can handle it. I, I can handle it. That's because I will sit in front of the TV. I'm, you already know I do film. Yeah. So I've already been known to either talk too much during a movie or I say a lot of things that people don't really care to hear because mm -hmm. they don't have the same like eye. So mm -hmm. what would be something that you think I would like that is very suspenseful? See, but like... <laughs> Like, there is a movie that I think is very successful that I've just <laughs> watched, but I feel like it's definitely, like, very out there to the point where I'm like, I don't think you would enjoy it. Are you going to say poor things? No, I don't watch okay. it. It's called The Voyeurs. The what? The Voyeurs. And if you don't know what that means, probably don't watch it then. <laughs> Can you spare me the... What? Can you explain it to me so I don't, like, look it up, I guess? This is off camera. <laughs> But not really. Like, there's a deeper meaning. I swear, it's just like, God. it's good though. Okay. Anyways, no, moving on. Got it, got it. <laughs> no, no. You actually, you can keep. How did we get up. here? We bounced that all was the such way a from rant. Africa to Love Island. I don't remember <laughs> how we went to Love Island though. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, cause I, I think we went into like movies. I was like, what would, 
you know. Or right, if an actual movie that's suspenseful. So try not to actually think about like, or what kind of movies do you like? What kind of movie TV shows do you actually watch? I like thrillers and stuff that like really makes you think or that you don't actually know the ending to. But I do love rom com. A good rom com. I used to. I used to watch rom coms. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they would be. I think just romantic movies. I'm not like the biggest fan of romantic movies. Really? But I don't like full on romance, but I do like something that has comedy in it that's romance based. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like the lightheartedness. But I do also love like murder stuff and documentaries. Like right now, I'm watching the documentary on, you know, those schools where like kids that were behaving poorly or whatever would get like kidnapped in the middle of the night and taken to like an institution or whatever? No. No? It's called like Ivy Ridge Park or something, Academy. But there's a lot of them. Paris Hilton was part of one where she was just taken in the middle of the night by these people and they're taken to these like, tr um, like. That's who she is. Cause I kept hearing her name and I never knew. Yeah, but there's a documentary that came out of one of them because there's like a whole cult sort of situation. Like there's a bunch of them, like all over the world. Like there were some in like Mexico. There were some in Europe. I don't remember where they said specifically. And they all started getting shut down because of like child abuse. Like, a, yeah, it's pretty intense. But anyway, that's what I'm watching now. What is this on? Netflix. Okay, I did not know. Watch those type of documentaries. They're so good. I didn't know. I didn't. I'm trying to think. Don't or like the big cult, the Latter Day Saints one. So I've heard of that. I just haven't. Like, I just haven't watched it. What's it? Be sweet and pray and be sweet or something like that. Could tell you. I don't know. It's really good. I don't know I these type of things. I think I'm trying to think of like psych, I guess psychological movies that yeah. I've seen. I think the craziest one that I remember is called Parasite. Oh yeah, the, is this the Japanese one or the mm -hmm. Korean one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still haven't watched it, I need to watch it though. Mm -hmm. So I won't like ruin it. Yeah. But it has a huge twist in it. Cause at first it, it seems kind of slow. Like you will watch it and it seems like really, really slow. Mm -hmm. But there's this huge twist that just hooks you so hard you have to finish the rest. Yeah. Because like it's something that can happen to anybody. It's basically almost like identity theft in a way, but mm -hmm. they, the way that they hide how it happens. The one I told you about from Angel Productions, the one of the sex trafficking ring in Columbia of Children, mm -hmm. that one's super good. Was it, did you how watch it? Did you cry when you watched it? Oh, I was in freaking tears because yeah. like, I want to be a mom so bad. Mm -hmm. That's like a big thing because I'm the only child, but like, the fact that you can, with animals and children, like, they are so innocent. The fact that people take, like, advantage of that, horrible. Like, I don't even know how you can look at a child and think those thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. just so disturbing to me. I don't know. Yeah, that I was agree. a really good movie. And it exploited, not exploited, it exposed, exposed. so much. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that that movie, I think it took a couple years to come out because, like, really big. Because the government's kept wanting to shut it down. Uh, like really big um, movie companies, I guess. I don't even know the word. But do you know what I'm saying? No, it was. They even said it was. That's what I mean. Like they kept, I think they were buying the movie and putting it on like the shelf basically. So mm -hmm. they were like buy it and hold it on purpose just so it wouldn't get out. So yeah. when it came out, it caused a lot of, I don't know, just like commotion. I mean, because it shows that the government isn't this perfect entity. Neither one. And like how we know now that mm -hmm. the US doesn't necessarily want to stop all of the drug cartels because we are the biggest consumers. So obviously yeah. we want to make money. And a big part of that is the people that control these sex trafficking rings are mm -hmm. the same ones usually that control the drug cartels. Yeah, so it's like, like that scares me the most. Only people here know what's going on. That's what I'm saying. And that scares me the most. Only because, like, you already know I want to go into film. Mm -hmm. You know? So, like, knowing that I want to make something that's also impactful. I never know when I'm actually digging too deep into something I shouldn't really go that deep into because there's those kind of consequences. But isn't that the whole you know I mean? point of yes. being an artist in the sense of, like, journalism? Like, you put your life on the line because if you just want to cover stories that are, like, in the cosmopolitan, mm -hmm. If that's your cup of tea, sure, but if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, like, you do everything in your power to actually bring that story to life. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, they struggle to get the movie out there, yeah, but yeah. how many of us were, like, our eyes were open that's to the true. fact that that was that happening? That is very true. That's very true. Because it was a hard watch for me in general. 
Just like in general, it really was. You did watch it? Yeah, I watched okay. it. Okay. Like I was watching it and I remember the, I can't spoil it. But yeah. You know, the first scene, I think when he met with the pedophile person and he there's all the stuff that he had in his house, I was so creeped out. Cause I was just looking at it all and the same thing. Of course, since he was a guy, I was like, I can't even imagine that way of thinking. No. You know, it just. You think about it and you're like, that's literally disgusting. Mm -hmm. And like people, th I, I can't, yeah, I just no. can't. We can this it's up. really, I, it's, and that's why like, you know, like people that are in jail, like if they know you've ever harmed a child, oh, yeah. they have to be like isolated because oh, they won't get killed, which is wild to me. Like it doesn't even, even between criminals, that's still like the worst yeah, thing you can do. True, that is very true. I didn't think of it that way. I knew that. I didn't think of it that way, actually. Mm -hmm. That's true. There was a girl or a lady on TikTok the other day that was talking about how she will not allow like sleepovers with her children because she used to work in like one of the county jails or something, mm -hmm. one of the prisons, and she said that the people that violate kids are some of the nicest, most respectful people that you wouldn't even think that they're creepy or like molesters or predators or anything because that's the way they have to act towards children to get them to their side. And that's why she was like, I literally, when I was switched over into like that unit, mm -hmm. everyone was like, yes, ma'am. Um, of course, whatever you say, like super sweet, super nice and everything, because that's literally how they have to act to like, you know, like um, get the confidence of a child and like, it's wild. Cause you wouldn't even think it. You'd be think they're like really creepy and that's like dodgy, but they're not. They're like the complete opposite. This is my, it's only mind boggling just because, well, I have a little sister and I don't know, it doesn't really like match the story, but just in general of kids, I, I like kids. I would love to have kids when I'm older. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, I don't even know the, the level of protection that will probably like be in my head when I'm a father. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you don't really know what to really look for yet because it's hard to, you don't know. know. That's what I'm saying. You will not know. You will not know the type of thinking that Someone else may have towards yeah. you, but they keep falling up. I mean, you take that, like, what's the um, percentage of, like, you're m most likely to be killed by your husband? Like, that's, yeah, have you never heard that? Like, I don't have to laugh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> The person you're most likely to be like killed by is your husband because the ratios or whatever, like, the percentage, the stats is so high. But it applies to the same thing where, like, you don't realize, like, how many fathers mm -hmm. molest their children. How many mm. males, like in general, in your family do? Like, even this is personal, but even in my family, it's happened. Yeah. So, like, you never really freaking know. And my mom was always like super weird about sleepovers. Mind you, she's different cultures. Like, you don't really do sleepovers in Colombia. But mm. I would never understood until now, where I'm even thinking of having my own children. I'm like, literally just walking in the store. Like, I used to run around and stuff. Absolutely not. Mm. Kidnapping a child takes like two seconds. Yeah. Like, like, it's wild. It would be like off camera. So I, I too was molested when I was a kid. Yeah. Like my, I think it was my cousin. It was my cousin from and my parents still don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's just like certain, it, you can see obviously like something that is carried with you throughout life. Yeah. That you kind of have to, like you don't have to hold on to it, but just the way that you grow up, you can see certain things more, you're more aware of certain things. And to other people, they may see it as like, either too detailed, too nitpicky, like whatever. But I just, I've seen how to other people, they have no clue because they just haven't been through. Until you experience it. You like even, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand like even sexual assault or rape until it, I was in a situation. Yeah, like older, and yeah. then you, your whole mind and perspective changes on it. Like you literally, there's so many topics I feel like even government wise that people feel like they have a space to talk on it but they really don't because until don't. you've experienced it you will never know to the extent of what a person goes through mm -hmm. and like i think that's the biggest issue it's like people trying to talk on things they have never experienced how would and this is just like for me too because i'm big on mental health in general mm -hmm. how would how would you go about a situation if you had a friend that you're really close with but mm -hmm. you just you can just tell they might not have been through certain things yet. And maybe the advice that you give them, mm -hmm. they don't understand how it's going to help them. But they just, 
they'll get like upset at you for giving certain advice that they don't know that is actually going to help. Mm -hmm. How would you handle that? It's very close to home. Asking for a friend. <laughs> like, Asking for a friend? Not I got a friend too like that? I mean, no, 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 no. No, I, I do. But <laughs> I don't know which, which friend you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only asking because, and this might sound hilarious, I feel like most of my life, I have been that person for a lot of people mm -hmm. to where it's harder for me to stay in relationships only because I, you know, say if something bad happens to a friend that you've already given advice to, mm -hmm. I don't ever like saying I told you so. I would mm -hmm. just hope that they understand like I was just trying to be there for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like usually they just get upset after. Like, why didn't you tell me? I did. <laughs> I don't. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how to handle that now, especially we're all getting older. But just the fact that people can't, like, I don't even know. I just, I don't know. Think of it this way. If it's that hard with someone that's an adult, mm -hmm. imagine it when it's your own kids. I just, I would And you have to be a parent and tell them, and they're still going to. So, like, at the end of the day, you provide your insight. They either choose one path or another, which we all have free will for a reason. Uh -huh. And if they fall, it's not a, I told you so, it's, I'm still here to help you through it because that's who you are. I'm a friend. Mm -hmm. I'm here to let you make your own decisions because you can't control anyone. And if they do mess up, you are there to help them through that. Mm -hmm. Cause at the end of the day, we're all going to make mistakes. Like no one's perfect. Like we've been there. There's a reason we're giving that advice is cause it's already happened to us. Yeah. And I think that's the hardest part because like we want to control the situation because we know how much it hurts and we don't want them to hurt the same way. But it really is like we only learn in life through mistakes. And that's true. You can't, I think you're going to push the person away so much more if you try to make them or force them to do something or not to do something. And like at the end of the day, all you can do is just be there for the person if something does happen. Mm -hmm. And if they're like blaming it on you, well then that's part of their own journey and you just say, I've done what I can as a friend, I've provided the feedback, or I've provided like the and recommendation, advice. the yeah. advice, you did made your own decision and then when you fall and make that mistake, I'm here to support you, but I can't take the blame for it because that was on me. Because yeah, that's where I've gotten to. Boundaries. I, girl. Girl. <laughs> girl. <laughs> no, but, boundaries. You know, I just, like, <laughs> And I'm not even thinking of specific people. I'm just thinking of, like, I have so many different, like, memories of situations to where it's, like, either I don't think you should do that. Maybe you should, like, double check. You know, it's, like, something, whatever it is. Genuinely speaking, it would be harder for me now to give advice to somebody. And them either getting upset and then realizing that I knew a way to, like, help them avoid mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. it's, like, a, it's a very... 50 50 but even then like you can give advice and that doesn't necessarily mean that their journey is going to end up the same way yours did mm -hmm. like you hear with like even celebrities like oh this person didn't believe in me this person didn't believe in me oh, I just heard you. and then they Bad become the famous story. and you're like well maybe it didn't work for the other 90 percent, but for the 10 percent, it does so you really don't like you might think you know the best to you but not every That's situation is the same so let me ask you this yeah because now I'm just thinking of it. So say if it's... Because I, I clearly understand that. Mm -hmm. And I definitely try to always ask, like, how someone is doing first. And then just listen to them. Like, I'm huge on listening first. Mm -hmm. No matter what. I'm pretty sure you know that. Yeah. Like, I remember when I texted you a couple weeks ago. I don't know. <laughs> those weeks, but you just... You already had a hard time believing that it was just, like, me mm -hmm. checking up on it, you know. But anyway. How would you go about... Or how would you say some, I don't know, I'll just say the situation. I'm butchering it. If it was like common sense. Uh-huh. In a way that someone was either disrespecting themselves, harming themselves, or definitely, I'm trying to think of like the words, the exact words. But you, like in the way of, like it's across the board, not healthy mm -hmm. and then you can just see them not going down like a good path and i'm not out of anyone i'm just really asking to hear your perspective because uh -huh. of course i have a perspective and it's good to hear other people's perspective so i can continue to improve mine you know yeah so like what would you do if you have a really close friend 
and you just know that something that they're maybe doing, the way that they're living, mm -hmm. may not be the healthiest to them, mm -hmm. or you may see other people around them maybe like taking advantage. Well, or how would you handle it? How would you try to handle it? I'm a fixer. That's like the biggest thing is I'm a fixer. I'm like, I don't really sometimes want to think about my issues. I'm like, mm -hmm. how can I fix you and like help you so I don't have to fix myself? Not in the bad way, but like just because like it is easier sometimes. You see a perception reality for that person that sometimes it's hard to see within yourself. So what happens is because I'm a fixer, I try to like navigate and control that a little bit. And the only problem with that is you can only help people so much, but they have to end up helping themselves. So what I've struggled with is like trying to do that for someone and then still not wanting to change it or grow from it or, you know, like get to a good place. And at that point, boundaries again, you have to be like, I did what I could as a friend. But when it starts to drag you down with it, like you have to let it go. Like I just ended a friendship because of that, because I've realized that I can only do so much until it's bringing me down and I'm becoming that person where I'm like, I'm doing stuff that's unhealthy, which is mm -hmm. taking all their um, problems and making it my own. That when they're down and, you know, like I'm in a good place, I'm letting them affect my emotions because of it. Like there's certain things like that where you just have to be like, that's not okay for me. Like I can be there for people and I help guide them and help them in the best ways I can, but if they don't want to do it for themselves, you kind of have to let them go and let them free because you really can't. Yeah, What's that true. saying? Like you can that's lead the horse true. to water, but you can't force can't it to drink it. Drink. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Or do Adam and Eve. <laughs> that's a big one. I'm just thinking of so many different things, but since my mind does run wild sometimes, I have a random question. Mm -hmm. An actual random question. Yeah. What is the <laughs> what is the weirdest thing that you think you eat? That I eat? Mm -hmm. Weirdest. I don't know, I feel like Like what is something that you eat that other people would just be like, oh, why are you mixing that? Like that's not supposed to go together. Honestly I don't feel like my taste buds are very out there. I'm kind of a picky person. I don't oh, like weird stuff. Definitely so. Like literally the only thing I can think of is everyone hates olives and I freaking love olives. Um, like I will just gulf them down. I eat them. I like the, what are the little green ones with the red thing in the middle? Oh. You know. Yeah. Green, yeah. Okay. Is there a name to them? Green olives? I can't think care. of a name. I just know they're good and they're like sour. Kalamata? Olives. I don't know. Something like that. What is your favorite food? I know that's an easy question. Food? Mm-hmm. On a typical Tampa, Friday night, where are you eating? Probably like Italian food. But, but like not Americanized Italian food. It's gotta be fairly authentic. You gotta name I live a there, spot, so though. I am very picky with my Italian food. Name a spot. Um, honestly, not gonna lie, Tampa kinda is a letdown for food for me. Like I used to love Tempano down here. Okay. But then it just became like their quality. And then I liked Olivia, but I still do, but I haven't been in a while. Been, really? I'm sure. I actually haven't been. Um, what kind of food do they have? It's like an Italian fusion type place. Hmm. They have good options, but... Do you think I would like it? I don't yeah. know, like, okay, I am a foodie. I'm a huge foodie. Um, I am too, and that's why I don't... I feel like here we're very limited. Okay, that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Saying. Where, where do you think for a foodie they should go? Because I've been to Europe. I've been to Italy. And yeah. I've had, I've actually, I'm not the biggest pasta fan, but I love Italian pasta. Don't look at me like that. I'm, oh, how can you not like cheese and carbs? I'm, I still seem tolerant. I'm lactose intolerant. I'm lactose intolerant. I can't eat it. Why? Because I'm lactose intolerant. That's, I'm allergic, technically. Most, okay. You know most black people are lactose intolerant. Really? I, I'm sure well, it's because you don't really have like, if you think about your ancestry, the type of animals, they don't produce milk, most of them. So, hey, it's the same thing with like cilantro, right? Hispanics love cilantro, but if you're like Scottish or very like white descent, it tastes like soap to you. It's called like the Viking gene, I think, or something like that. Okay, I got another question now. Only because, you said the, you said the Viking gene, what was it yeah, called? Yeah, my dad has it because he's like very, very Scottish. So there's this thing in his hand that's like a little nerve here, so he can't like fully open his hand. It's called the Viking gene. But he also thinks cilantro tastes like soap. But my mom thinks it tastes like soap too. Well, because y'all don't have cilantro down there either. 
Down where? Down over there. Well, where's that? It's somewhere <laughs> in the continent of Africa. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like, okay, this is the topic I was talking with my roommate the other day. So you know how like they okay. say it's bad to eat seafood, raw seafood, like sushi and stuff when you're pregnant? No. You I've never that? been pregnant. Oh, oh well, no. I wouldn't like, know Common that. knowledge. I, uh, okay. But how do generations and generations of like Japanese people who have eaten raw fish, not even just Japanese, like so many Asian cultures, okay. eat fish? What? That doesn't make sense. So. Th- most of them have probably eaten raw fish when they were pregnant. But it's like all these weird like medical things that come up, they're like fads, where one week it's like, don't eat red meat because it's super bad for you, but then the next week it's like, bulk up on protein, it's super good for your muscles, you know, like. You have a good point, because I, oh my goodness. I you never know what's good or bad anymore. I think it was junior year when the, I don't know if that's when it came out, the Netflix documentary, mm-hmm. Game Changers. Did yeah. Have you seen that? I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. So, at the time, I think it was, there was this huge food shift where people were saying like meat was bad. They were mm-hmm. saying like don't eat meat, don't eat. Go vegan, go vegetarian. Uh huh. But now it's if you go vegan or vegetarian, you're not yeah. getting the nutrients you need, and girls aren't getting their periods, and like you're super weak and your iron's super low. And I have no clue. I just know whenever I used to work at Publix, yeah. So I know where a lot of um, I just know where all the foods are in the store. Mm-hmm. So whenever I'm like grabbing something, I'm like, is this even like considered healthy? You know what I mean? Nothing like, I, I honestly in the U.S. is like natural at this point that's a good point like even if you like go to the grocery store and you pick up a slab of chicken or whatever like you don't know what the chicken was fed you don't even know if it has hormones or whatever like there's generally nothing here that i would say is like actually healthy for you because even with gluten like italians we're talking about pasta like make a lot of pasta and it has gluten but the type of wheat we use here in the u.s is so much harder to digest that that's why everyone here is like celiac and like don't eat gluten is super bad for you but it's not gluten itself it's just the way we process it in the u.s versus in europe because i think it's a red wheat versus like a white wheat and your stomach just can't digest it so now my doctor's like get off gluten but i can eat pasta if it's made in italy with that type of wheat it's just i can't eat the wheat here because everything's bad for you in the u.s that's why we're all sick because it's a scheme where pharma will then pump you up with medicine and then the symptoms will go away, but you're not actually cured. And then it's a whole new cycle again. You're gonna get this killed. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Do you think that you'd be invited to a cookout? I mean, I have been. Like, no, like a cookout. Like, yes. You know what I'm trying to say? A yes. cookout? What, what, what would be a dish? If I invited you to a cookout, what dish are you bringing? You're, you have a lot on the line right now. This would probably be the first clip I'm gonna post. <laughs> I want to say, <laughs> I want to say brisket. <laughs> Every fried chicken okay. and watermelon. You can't. Is that the answer you're looking for? No, I'm not looking for it. Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. Oh okay. Okay. It's something like vine days, you know. Yeah, I know. Can you swim? Can I swim? Okay. To be brutally honest, I can swim, right? <laughs> You're not breaking the stereotype. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Did your dad go for milk I and can, never come back? I, no, he's still at home. Oh, okay. I. Mean, I I can swim. It's just I don't have the leg thing down. Oh. I really so you don't. do the arms, not the legs. So I can swim perfectly, top half. Yeah. Right? Just imagine I'm going perfect. I got the. You're not very going. aerodynamic. Right. Yeah. But then I'll kick. It'll be like, right. It's like it's very skittish. I'm just being honest right now. I can. I'm not a great swimmer. I don't either. have the leg part down. You saw my video where I called my dad about the like underwater welding. Mm-hmm. No, there's this like. Have you seen the trend? Okay, there's this trend where like. People are calling their dads and saying that they oh, got like underwater. an internship underwater so welding. I don't get that. I don't understand. Because it's like a very dangerous job that they pay a lot of money. Um, and so I did it to my dad and like the first thing he says is, Sabrina, you can't swim. And I was like, I mean valid, but like you don't have to call me out like that and expose me, you know? So what is exactly that job? But I really don't know what it is. The underwater water, water welding. welding. Okay, so you know like regular welding? Yeah. Okay, so when you have metal, right, and you're trying to like put it together, you can't just put it with glue. So what you do is you get like a really hot tool and you melt metal to like close it together. Does that make sense? Why is it underwater? Okay, so oil drills, like oil rigs. Got it. Big ones. Where they're in the middle of the freaking ocean, someone has to go down there and like weld the metal to like keep it standing. And it's very dangerous because you're literally melting stuff Mm -hmm. underwater with like electricity 
and fire and sparks, which is literally super conductive. Mm. You can like electrocute yourself, okay. like you can burn yeah, yourself. That's... Like there's See, I would, in the I would... ocean, like meters below. I haven't. Um, I don't think I've never seen a video of it. Like you know, I just would have never thought about. I mean, no. Not I can't like that deep either. Remember, yeah. I got I got the leg thing. Oh, on, so I'm scared of the freaking ocean. I can't go that deep. It's like my biggest fear. Really? Yeah. What's your would, biggest would fear? You mine? Yeah. All right. Wait, I'm gonna read you. I think it's losing people. No. No. Damn. My biggest fear. I gotta think. I was gonna tell you my childhood fear. Clowns. Do you have one? Um, clowns and dolls. That was your childhood fear. And like spiders. Because you watched Pennywise. No, because when I was seven years old and my parents left on a trip, they left me with this family and two girls locked me in a room on my birthday, on my seventh birthday, and made me watch Chucky. And I've been traumatized since. My mom's apologized though a few times for leaving me with them crazy girls, but... Oh, so your friends did that? No, they were like a little older than me. Okay. They were like family friends, okay. but I wasn't necessarily like friends with those girls. Got it. That's why they were bullying me. Are you still scared of it now? Like, could you watch a Chucky movie or no? Like, I've never watched Chucky. I don't like it. But I've watched, like, Annabelle because I like scary movies. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in, like, a room with dolls or, like, an antique shop, like, I will never allow my kids to have dolls. Mm -hmm. They play with anything but dolls. They creep me out. I can't. Mm -hmm. I think. So, two things. Okay. One, my childhood fear was Freddy Krueger. And I can't. I hate saying it only because he was such an ugly form of a... I hated him. Sabrina, I hated him. Is that the guy from Elm Street? Mm -hmm. I hated him with because like the... the claw, the little oh, the hand. Yeah, 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 okay. So I hated him because I remember my uncle telling me about it when we were in New York, 2000 and it had to be 2009 because I remember okay. my cousin Dale had on these 2010 glasses. We were there for New Year's. Uh -huh. So we were in this restaurant uh, it's right. like a very random fact, 2010. Yeah, like, I remember it all. They were blue, they had a little sparkle on <laughs> right. I just remember him singing the song. It was like, 2010? It was like uh, Frank Sinatra. Uh -huh. But I hate him because like, just the way he looks, like, his breath probably stinks. But just like, <laughs> I just can't imagine being in bed and you're dreaming. And mm -hmm. his, so the way my uncle described it was, you're dreaming, you're in his world. So yeah. Same, yeah, like that. I was terrified just because yeah. of like, and I think one, I was definitely developing the understanding of film at the time. Mm -hmm. So I knew all the details, like the music scared me, the way that it looked, like just the grittiness of the mm -hmm. film scared me. Him on screen laughing, I can't imagine an old dude that's just disgusting laughing next to me in my sleep as a kid. Couldn't do it, couldn't. So I would sleep with my covers over uh. my head. And so I would wake up and it would just be like sweaty. Mm. Yeah. But then I remember, <laughs> I think I turned 11, so it was like two years of being scared. Two years, two whole years. I have like such a rational fear I'll bring up later, that's so funny. Two okay, continue. Years. And so I remember, I saw a clip of Freddy Krueger walking into someone's room and <laughs> killing them in their bed. Oh, what? <laughs> killing them in their bed. And like, it took on me YouTube? out. Like, yeah. Oh. Like it was. It's a. That was part of the movie. Yeah. yeah it's. But oh, okay, I, just, okay. I remember I saw the clip as a kid, and I was like, I'm so stupid. Like, I'm over here covering myself with blankets. Like, it's not gonna help me. But just like it was like such a security blanket at the time. But I just remember how disgusting it was. That's how. I remember uh, 2000 and it was like 17. Do you know what grab bash is? So grab bash is when like teenagers and young adults get to go to Universal Studios during Oh, take it back. I went to Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah, Halloween Horror Nights. That's what it was. It was, right, it was like Grab Bash. I think I don't what think was I was forced, name? but I think it was um my like, They always have Freddy Krueger at like, That's what I'm saying. Nights, Nobody yeah. warned me he was there. Yeah. I'm just thinking there's all these different houses that I've never Well they had to. Chucky this Past year I went. You went and there was Chucky there. There was Chucky. It was like one of the houses was literally Chucky themed. I did not go through that one because yeah, I would feed myself. That's what but I'm they saying. had like the buckets, like the popcorn buckets, and Chucky like opened its mouth with like eyes and like mm -hmm. talked to you. Nothing. And people were like eating out of the bucket with a Chucky face. I'm like, that's disturbing. I, do it. I just Halloween in general. I'm not comfortable around Halloween. Like it is my worst holiday. In October, I purposely. 
<laughs> I actually like it. <laughs> I disappear. Like, just because I know... The, I don't know. It's something about the month itself. Mm -hmm. I feel like everything starts smelling. I just... I, I, I don't know. Something about October in general. Knowing mm -hmm. that it leads up to Halloween. I personally can't do it. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Just because of, the, of all the... Um, Freddy Krueger thing is one. Yeah. But just of... I mean, I just... I can't even think of Halloween right now. I hate... Yeah, I just know that there's there's a lot of things that happen. Like remember the clowns? Oh yeah, I was living in that's Virginia when there was clown sightings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean that's like with anything. Like can't blame a whole holiday on it. You know I, what I mean? I do. I mean, <laughs> I'm just trying to get past it. There's a reason people like horror films. It's like that adrenaline. I think the same with Halloween. It's like, mm -hmm. but it's a little different. It's like you can kind of pretend to be someone else. But some people kind of get into like the demonic weird stuff. That's what I'm like, saying. Yeah. That is why I hate Halloween. Just because there's so many things that I've seen and heard of in general, or just for maybe like stories or testimonies mm -hmm. from other people, even myself included, mm -hmm. but just as a whole, I definitely just try to stay away from like whatever is really happening around Halloween themed mm -hmm. stuff. Only because like I don't want that in my head. Like, oh, yeah. Just from knowing. <laughs> I think like anything is like the way that you go about it. Like, I always had good memories with it because I just wanted to go get candy. You know, it was never That's like my parents never let me do anything favorite. scary. Yeah. Like it was always like a princess or like a fairy or I think mm -hmm. I was like a pumpkin and an eggplant when you were as a baby. Yeah. Weird stuff like that, but it was never like get into like the creepiness of it because both of my parents are very Catholic mm -hmm. too. True, 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 true. But like, I mean, you have like both ends where it's like, oh, it's just fun to dress up and then there's the people that like take it a whole nother like level. That's what, I think that's what it was. I think it was the people that took it, oh, not the people that take it home. Yeah. But just like, I'm already into social media. I'm already into film. And knowing the crazier side of it, I try not yeah. to like pay too much attention to it during October because I know everything shifts. To the theme. Yes and no, because like we were talking before, there's bad stuff happening all the time that oh, we just uh, don't know version. about. Mm -hmm. And so like, yeah, on Halloween it might be a little bit more of an excuse to like do it out in public per se. That's true. But like, wow. that's true. That's you true. never know. That's true. You really never know. I don't know. know. It's definitely like a physical response. It could be like a technical trauma response in a way. Yeah. Because I will like, I, don't, I really, something is up. Like when it hits October Does anything 3rd, ever happen to you? On Halloween, because there's this thing, and I don't know. It's like my roommate was talking to her therapist about it, but there's like your body reacts to certain anniversaries. So like, if something bad happened to you like years ago on a specific mm -hmm. date, you might not necessarily even remember it happened, but you might feel weird, and it's just your body like remembering certain mm -hmm. things, and it like I don't know, maybe that's what happens in Halloween. Yeah. So this small part would just be off camera. Uh -huh. I think that's kind of when I got molested, like the oh uh, maybe yeah. then or in general. So I don't know. I've probably I've told Kaylee a little. I've seen like demons, like I've seen mm -hmm. literal demons to where that's why I just can't stand Halloween because I've I've been attacked in my sleep, like you know what I mean, all mm -hmm. that crazy stuff to where it's harder to watch scary movies. Yeah. Because I'm like I will watch them like that's technically real. It's just people don't know that you know. Yeah. But it's like they'll change it to be entertaining because that's the stuff that obviously people don't know. True. You know? True, true. Yeah. I mean. I'll give you an example. Okay. Okay. Do you know, um, have you seen Insidious? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Really? Oh, what did you <laughs> okay. The Red Door, I think is what it's called. There is this one part where I remember, I, I might put this in. Maybe, I don't know. But there's one part that I remember where the kid purposely started astral projecting. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And so as soon as he did it, he saw like the demon under his bed. So that was what I like told a friend of mine that was watching me. I was like, I don't know if I could watch this because I'm starting to understand. Like, that's exactly what happens to me. I don't astral project. Mm -hmm. But there's been times to where I've woken up and there's just, just figure like there. Yeah. Now, you can like, you know, because either it puts its hand on you like whatever. But that's just how I realized like, holy crap. Like, they just put that on the screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool in a way that like, you can definitely break that down to show it visually, mm -hmm. you know? But like, 
in the same way of like some people don't understand how serious that is. Like well, that, for you, it's like it's out of me. taking something and like making it really real for you. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, I feel like there is a veil like between like our world and like you know yes. spiritual world. Yes. And obviously, like the thing is. I think you can't be afraid of like the bad because I feel like especially with like faith and stuff like everyone's super scared of even diving into it. I'm not saying like actually go and seek it but I'm saying like you know there's good you know there's bad and like it's better to be aware and knowledgeable about it the same way that I like my kids like I'm not just gonna be like life is rainbows and sunshine because they need to know the good and the bad so that they're safe. Mm -hmm. So the same exact way with that like don't be scared that you know it's there and like try to like push it, push it, push it, because like you do have to accept the reality of it. Yeah, I'm definitely not scared anymore. When, I, when it first like started happening, I yeah. was stalking. But just when it first started happening, I didn't know how to like, like it, it was a very new experience because I didn't know what to like think of it. I was like, am I just tired? Like, you know, yeah. like was, so many different things. But when it started to keep happening in different like scenarios. And then I think the, the craziest part was when it happened to me and someone else that was my roommate at the same like hour mm -hmm. and so i knew it was like all right like this is yeah there's something obviously that i don't know like the spiritual all that stuff that i'm not knowledgeable with i don't mm -hmm. want to go seeking for it but i just know to like pray more read be in my Bible. yeah you know, like, like you're not trying to that's what I'm saying, like, pull out the ouija board and you know. like bring it Absolutely to fruition not. and actually allow it into your life but mm -hmm. like there is a possibility that, you know, demons and stuff like that exist and they're always trying to get to us. So it's like knowing that, what are the actions I take instead of just like mm -hmm. ignoring it because that is the worst way to deal with things in the world is like ignoring it, like confront it and actually like try to fix it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that's I've had like, moments like that where I'm like, you feel it, you feel that presence, you feel something. You know, you know. It's scary. Don't but see, that's also why I watch horror movies because. I laugh about how ridiculous they are sometimes, mm -hmm. and it kind of helps you through that process. Like, mm -hmm. I remember my, I just said my mom's very Catholic, so like I always had like priests at my house randomly, or like nuns. And there was this one priest that like sticks in my head because he did the opposite of what like the Catholic Church says is to like not expose your n not just Catholic but even Christians in general not expose yourself to those images. The only difference he said is like you need to also learn from it. Like, it's not that you're watching and believing everything that happens and like, you're like, okay, whatever. Like, you actually take knowledge from it. So like, he would dissect these horror movies down mm -hmm. into like, research. But like, I'm like, I understand not exposing yourself to it, but also like, understanding things that come with it. Like, it's entertainment. If you actually want to believe it and practice it, that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. Like, go practice witchcraft. Yeah, but like, that's like the point of ignoring it, where like, it's reality, there's, real things in life like with scary movies like there's re there's real parts to it and like there's a bigger message to it and like kind of dissecting them and like mm -hmm. I don't know to me it's like it, I don't feel like there's a harm in it like even that other movie I was telling you about like yeah it's like very sexual in certain things but like there's another meaning behind it that's more important mm -hmm. it's just like smokes and mirrors you know mm -hmm. I know what you're saying yeah. like don't focus on like the off brandy thing too much because mm -hmm. there's a deep hate yeah, that that makes sense yeah yeah i mean like even if you watch like the passion of christ like there's certain things in there like i always said like christ or jesus was with prostitutes and thieves and all this stuff and like you can say oh like that's bad i'm not going to pay attention i'm only paid to the good stuff but all that is what creates the story mm -hmm. like you can't mm -hmm. leave it out just because you want to hmm. here's rainbow sunshine it's like no what's the reality of the world like that's true that's very true that's like, point. do you tie feet? I do, I wear a size five. If you guys are into feet, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I know, I'm just, I was, I had a red question. Channel, <laughs> <laughs> my OnlyFans uh, plug. <laughs> <laughs> the handle is uh, Sabrina Small Feet. Zero one can only fit. I don't know. I'm gonna ask a question. It can be off camera or not. What? If you had, like, if you were down to the wire, like, you just had nothing else, and someone was like, oh my gosh, like, I will sell your fee fix. How much are you charging them? Um, is it just like a picture of my feet? 
I don't know. There's a really creepy dudes out there. I, d I really don't know the... I mean, I know girls that make bank out of it. Really? Yeah, because, like, they'll even have, like, you wear your socks for a day and put them in a little bag and send it to the guy and it's, like, 200 bucks. That's insane. See, I wouldn't necessarily do would anything that, like, exposes yeah, of course, of course. this, but it's my feet. You think, like... You could go to the freaking thrift store, throw some socks, and say they were yours and send them. You know what That's I mean? Like, what? it's you, feet. You That's weird. Me a whole new thing. <laughs> I got you. That's Let's great. start a business. Let's Straight. do it. Go to Goodwill socks. Do a yeah. Do a pair. Go get some nasty socks. Shoot. Oh, yeah. That's a whole drop shipping idea. Yeah. That's. I'm. I'm a little blown. Just the fact that you just said oh, that's a thing. You know what upsets just me like, on this topic? I'm, I'm like. Is. Guys complaining that these OnlyFans girls are making so much money just on their body. Who do you think is paying for it? Okay, that's what. Okay. Your own gender. Like, how can you be upset? Like, we're exploiting the fact that it's a man's world, and we're gonna gain in the ways that we can gain. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, come true. on. That's like I don't even. I actually know a couple OnlyFans models. I know. If I. I I don't think I could just because it's a mental thing the way that I grew up with my parents, but you know, like. Did you all care? I'm like, bro, if I could make that money, they make a lot. They make so much. Some, I think, some would be like 80k in a month. Yeah, and, more than that. And they didn't, they didn't even have sex with anybody. I know, that's just that's wild. 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 And I'm like, I'm not gonna judge them because, girl, get the bang. Like, if these creepy men are paying for it and. Me and my, me and my boy Mike, we always talk about it because like we'll have all. Oh, I cannot wait to get him on here just because like he's the original person like he's the one who wanted to actually have like a podcast uh -huh. but it would just be me and him we could talk all day yeah but a topic that always gets brought up is that and so what he'll always ask me is like I'm trying, you hear that moving thing right yeah what was that I don't know it's a crunchy crunch but he always asks like what would I do if I had like a girlfriend or a wife and she had, was like the only thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do. I, I see it kind of like in this way. If she's not entertaining anyone, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Like people see her all day, whether she's clothed or not. You know what I mean? I I wouldn't know how to. That's a personal decision. Yeah, I'm I just like, know. if the girl isn't cheating. Or using it like I know girls that strictly just stand in front of the camera and get pictures taken of them but there's a man that is texting and messaging this men for her like she is not doing that at that point like if that's what your girl is doing all she's doing is just getting pictures taken and everyone else is managing the stuff for her and she's loyal to you and isn't messing with anyone verbally emotionally physically I mean who cares I don't know, that's still your girl. <laughs> no, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just like, I'm trying to, I, I wouldn't know, I can't like. Because I want to find line with all I'm these girls that post Instagrams and their bikinis and stuff. And that, that's what we talked about earlier. I wouldn't know how to think of it until I'm like in the situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. I'm scared to even say that because I don't want to be in it. So I'm making that decision. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. You know, it's like, is, is that the only reason I'm with me? Yeah, like, I don't, I don't. But then, that. what bothers she me is guys that would say no to that and then follow girls that do that. So that's what I mean. And I, I'm like, I, I make it make sense. I, I personally mute a lot of females. And I, it's not like a pain in my past thing. It's just, I'm a very focused individual. Mm -hmm. So I know they would, and not, like, no disrespect. There would be, you probably know that too. There would be a lot of women, sometimes men, but usually women, that will post only for like attention on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. those, you immediately, even if they're like friends, yeah. I would know it, but like, like I said earlier too, just like people who may have done that or do that, that definitely like complain about being mistreated or whatever, mm -hmm. you right off the bat. So like I, I, I mute, that's just like a me thing. Yeah. If I know if I'm not, I don't see you on a daily basis or maybe just weekly, monthly, but whatever it is, mute. Mm -hmm. I, it, can, it can even be a dude. It's not just like a woman thing. Yeah. I usually do that though because I know that it's a weird thing for me to follow a girl that I may think is attractive mm -hmm. and just like their pics. Like that's what he's talking to. In, a, in yeah. a way, it is slightly. Like I, I, feel I like don't it's say anything. So difficult with social media nowadays to <laughs> have relationships because it's like I've always been the type of person. I'm like, if a person's gonna cheat, they're gonna cheat. 
I'm never going to keep you from it. I'm not going to try to control you out of situations where you would, like, if you have respect for me, you won't even put yourself in a situation like that. If you're looking at a girl's picture, you're friends with her, it's normal, sure, whatever. But if you know that, like, I would be somewhat, like, uncomfortable because she's, like, half naked or it's because she's trying to get certain attention from you, that's different. But, again, like, we live in Florida, for example. Everyone's posting, like, bikini pics. You know, like... That's true. I feel like that's a little different, though, because it's, like, it is a beach. It's the way that you're mentally liking the picture. Are you liking it because you're lusting over her? Or are you liking it because she just posted and she's your friend? I know men want to use the excuse that y'all... Your mind works differently, there's different hormones, whatever, I don't care. Like, I can like a picture of a shirtless guy and be like, that was lustful. And I will not do it if I'm in a relationship, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if he posts and he's at the beach with his friends and I like it, it's not because I'm like lusting over him. But if there is that thought in my head, then I will not do it. I think you're the first woman to like openly say that. No, like, no, I I mean, just in general, because that's like, that's such a hard topic. Mm -hmm. Like, even not, like, not carry that with podcasts. No. That is a very hard topic to talk about. Only because some yeah. people will not want to give that up. They know, like, well, so and so looks so amazing. Like, I just love looking at her. Mm-hmm. Like, that is, to be real, mm-hmm. men do do that. I do do that. There will be plenty of times where I'll see someone, I'm like, my goodness, like, she is just beautiful. Then I'm you because I know I can't. Like, I don't want, I don't want to do that to myself. Yeah, so, but like, even I, then, I, I look at girls and I'm like, damn, like, she look good. And I'm going to like it, but not in, like, a lustful way, just that appreciation, appreciation appreciation thing. And still, like, it's up to you to decide if that's disrespectful. Like, mm-hmm. I've never been one to stop my significant another from going on trips. Even having mm-hmm. girlfriends. I'm like, if you have girlfriends, you have girlfriends. I have a lot of guy friends. But there's a certain respect where, like, if you want to go on a trip and you think that it's crossing the line or being disrespectful, that is on you to make that decision. Mm-hmm. You're an adult in a relationship. You make those decisions. I'm not going to keep you from it. I'll and if it. something happens, thank God it did because I know what kind of person you are. That's true. I mean, I, I feel like that goes both ways, 100%. Yeah. What would you do? And this is just a scenario. Uh-huh. It's a girl's trip. You're going to Vegas or Miami. And you have yeah. boyfriends and you know, like whatever. And he starts tripping. Mm-hmm. What's going on? What's like? But you, but you know mm-hmm. that you just have like it's just the girls. It's mm-hmm. just a girls trip. That's it. Cause I, you already know that's like a very big thing. Again, like just yeah. the day and age that we live in. I feel like it's hard because like culturally, I'll say this: when you go out, at least as Hispanics, we go out to dance. We're not really going out to fully hook up. And I feel I like here, when you go it. out, people oh, are yeah. going to go hook up. Here, as in Florida, or here as in the U.S. in general, yeah. I would say. Okay. So like. When I go to Colombia, everyone's dancing with other people's partners. It's like a very like respectful thing. You're just there to dance. Mm -hmm. Here it's like you dance with someone else's girl, even if it's not like full and grind or whatever, like it's still disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So culturally there's already that. Mm -hmm. So a girl's trip, it depends on the friends you're going with and what you guys are doing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going on a girl's trip with girls that are all in relationships who are very respectful and you're doing wholesome stuff, sure. If you're going out even just to dance one night, sure. But it's just how you compose yourself because like again, like if I go out in Colombia, it doesn't matter if I'm dancing with someone else's boyfriend or whatever because there's that mutual understanding that it's just an activity. It's not something deeper than that. Even here, I've been told, you're so flirty, like why are you so touchy? In my culture, you kiss one cheek, two cheeks, you hug. If you don't do that, it's disrespectful. If I do that here, everyone thinks I'm flirty and touching your boyfriend. No, that's just how it is. I hug everyone because if I don't, my mom would get mad at me. Mm-hmm. Like. Cultural. It's weird. I feel like it's disrespectful. I'm just like, hi, because that's not what I was taught from my mom's side. And so it's like hard because it's like, even with that, it's like what's cheating, what's not. Culturally, it's very different. Mm -hmm. It is. Here, it's like, I've dated white guys that have been like, that's disrespectful if you dance with someone else. But I've dated Hispanic guys where we all like dance with other people and it's not. Depends on how, you know. But yeah. the intentions are. But if you're just there to dance, you're just there to dance. I, I can. I see exactly what you're saying. Like I, I, I know it because uh, my family is Caribbean. It's like half of my family is. So I know like yeah. it's a, definitely a culture thing with the dancing part. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was only smiling because I just wanted to know the answer. <laughs> only because I'm, I'm just thinking of a bunch of like vines and Instagram. You already know how it goes. Spring yeah. break, winter break, like Mexico. Yeah, but that's like hookup culture just being toxic. That's true. And I feel like. There's a certain age you should date and you should get with people if you want to or like you should explore your options. 
But as soon as you make a commitment to someone, don't. If you want to be single, break up with a person. That's my biggest thing. Like, I'm not going to go cheat because if I don't genuinely want to be with you, I will break up with you and go to the person I want to, like, do anything with. What happens is people get comfortable in those relationships. I feel like men tend to do this a little more than women, at least from the things that I've heard from people that I've been around, is they'll cheat on their girlfriend and then be like, well, it's because I love her and she's like my person and she's my home. It's because you're comfortable with them. You know they're not gonna leave you, but you're not getting everything you want from that person. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're not really with them. It's a facade that they're living in a world where you're faithful, but you're not being. That's true. I, mean, I know, I've seen situations like that. Like, obviously that's manipulative, that's really off. And breaking up people is hard, don't get me wrong. It is hard, but, but I mean, definitely from the male standpoint, like. Mm -hmm even from anyone's standpoint, to know that someone that you are with is either not going to leave you because it is hard for them to leave you, or mm -hmm. just maybe they are like in too deep, whatever. That's mm -hmm. definitely manipulative, like whatsoever. Yeah. I was going to say on the um, the cheating side, I think that's what we were on. Mm -hmm. um, I have never cheated on anyone. Like, I, I don't know what that mindset looks like. You know, I've been cheated on, but mm -hmm. I just, I don't know what... I don't know what it's like to do that and then try to kind of like cover up, you know what I mean? It's just so like scary like, to me. I'm so blunt and honest with people. Like to a default where sometimes, especially girls, I feel like take it too harsh. Mm -hmm. But it's like I rather let people know where I'm at and let them do with that information what they will. Like for me, it's like I rather know you cheated on me and let me make the decision that I want to forgive you or I don't. But when you're scheming behind me, that pisses me off because I have no control in making the decisions for myself. That's true. And it's just, it's like anything. It's like if you don't tell the person, they can't make their decisions. Like, I hate that so much. I don't know. I hate that so much. <laughs> I'm like, the biggest pet peeve is like dishonesty, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I think, I've, I've definitely like mentioned it on my story before. I think my mm -hmm. biggest pet peeve is the buddy buddy in someone's face. Mm hmm. Oh, you know, either you're gossiping behind them, you probably are not. Yeah. As like, well, as you say, or to them, to mm -hmm. other people, does that make sense? Like, you yeah. may like talk bad about them to other people, mm -hmm. but oh, like, I can't. I think, I think that's just with who I am. Like, okay, I know physically, like, I'm a big person. So, naturally, when I'm saying something that may seem like genuine or like soft or just like, how are you doing today? Like, you know, like caring, I guess, mm -hmm. it may come off as just like, he's not really like, you know, especially how just the majority of men are. It's like, he's not really like, yeah, actually thinking of me. Like, he's not he, 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 yeah. exactly, see what I'm saying? So, I think that's the hardest part for me when I was in relationships because I would go like all in, like, I mm -hmm. would just want to. You probably experienced that, you just know how to be there for someone, you want to be there for them. You, whatever they're going through, you try to help them. But then it's like, after all that, like I emotionally gave you everything. Yeah. But still like, you know. No, that's yeah. boundaries. That's something I'm learning dating wise. It's like, I date someone and I'm like, I want to make them happy and make them feel fulfilled that I don't do that for myself. Mm -hmm. And then you're not two individuals coming together. It's like, you're kind of merging into one and that's when it gets like unhealthy. And that's literally, again, boundaries are so important because mm -hmm. it's like, you need to, help that person and support them to grow because that is what you do in a partnership, but you also can't forget yourself in that process because there's a lot of leeches out there. They take, 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 and take, but they're not gonna give back. And when you're not getting that like reciprocation from someone, that's when you need to cut it off. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying with cutting off that friend was like, yeah. I was giving so much, but I wasn't, I don't expect back, yeah, but basically. like you need a certain amount to- To keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like. <laughs> Yeah, no. it's like it, it's not being taken advantage of. You, you are like putting a lot more in the way you're getting back, or even just like a mutual. Yeah, response. and like, how do you expect me to be able to keep giving you as a friend if you're not even giving me like a breadcrumb mm. to get more energy for? If all I'm doing is just giving you and giving you the bread and giving you the bread and like not getting anything back, like mm. at that point that's yeah, it's toxic and unhealthy and like sometimes it's hard to let go of people. I'm really bad at that, but. I like learning. I like I, I don't even know if it's I'm bad at letting go of, of people mm -hmm. or I always want to know why someone is the way that they are mm -hmm. when they're not saying it but it's obvious just from how they're acting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to 
leave or just like completely cut somebody off. You're not good then, with mystery. I'll say, yeah, I'll I'll accept that. I'll agree to that. I think when I know, mm -hmm. like when it's obvious, I will treat it as such. Like mm -hmm. I'll just I don't know. I'll treat them differently, but just so that we're both still kind of like in agreement. Yeah. But I definitely won't combat. If someone tries to disrespect me, it's different. But mm -hmm. if you're maybe you're just like oblivious to the way that someone mm -hmm. grew up, or maybe culturally speaking, things may be different. Um, but it's not like someone's trying to purposely disrespect me. Maybe they just are used to under bare minimum. I don't know. Like, I'll I'll give you yeah. an example. Like you said with your friend, I'm not out on your friend, mm -hmm. but have you ever been in situations to where you know that you are giving more than the other person and maybe you pull back just a little bit mm -hmm. to even it out mm -hmm. and they get mad that you're not giving your all when they never gave half? Something that my roommate, who's also my best friend, told me is I set the standard at the start. And what happens with people pleasers, people who want to fix, people who just want to love and see the good in everyone, you set the standard so high that as soon as you're a little bit below that level, people are going to be like, that's not how you usually treat me. Mm -hmm. And especially with takers, they're going to get upset, like you said. And it's like, for me, because I moved around so fast, like so many times, not so fast, but I did it really fast, like every year I was moving. It's like I had to get close to people so fast because I had a year to make not just a friendship, to really build a deep connection where we could like be best friends True. and then just leave. And you moved around a lot. So now right. my problem is I've been here for a few years now, but I still have that ingrained in my head where I'm like, I need to get close to people super fast. Got it. But that means I'm giving way too much of myself up front to mm. people that don't even necessarily deserve it mm. or that I think deserve it, but they show me down the line, like, you know, a few weeks later, a month later, they don't deserve it. And that, even into my relationships, I like, best person, they do everything great. Three months in, I'm like, well, they actually weren't consistent with who they were, you know? But I didn't allow myself that time to really get to know the person because I've never been able to have that time. So it's like something I'm trying to fix, like taking it slow with people getting to know them like slowly Yeah, I'm before not, I give my all. <laughs> actually, like, I need that. I mean, mm -hmm. Because like up front, like you just said, like you kind of are yourself sometimes, like completely yourself maybe, to where <laughs> that, that, that's just you being you. And I feel like that's probably like the hardest part about just how life is changing in general, like across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, like some people may watch who you are first to just be like how much you can take from that person mm -hmm. and that is just so skewed. Yeah. You know? And like, it, never, it doesn't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. that, that. I think that's what makes me sad sometimes because I'll be aware of it like we just talked about, you know, a little yeah. while ago. Just like, I think the more things that I become aware of, it doesn't scare me to know who I am. I think it's, it's worrisome that knowing who I am and who I'm continuing to grow to be, like, it's just kind of be like, I have to watch out for myself more because I know mm -hmm. a lot of people are just going to try to like, take Yeah, it, take and it's that fine line between myself. still being a very good and loving person and giving, but also not being taken advantage and knowing that mm -hmm. fine line because there's a lot of times where I'm like, well, this person hurt me and I don't want to give them like any part of me anymore and I'm going to treat them the way they treat me, but that's not who I am, so I'm unfulfilled because I still want to love and give to them, but it's how much do I continue doing that? Mm -hmm. Where do I, you know cross that line, where do I put those boundaries? Because at the end of the day, like, I need to still be true to myself, but I also can't just let everyone walk all over me. Mm -hmm. And that's something that takes a long time to learn because not everyone's the same, not every situation is gonna be the same. And it's like, how do you measure up to that? Like, you know. If you had to take a day to yourself, mm -hmm. it, just, it just hit me. Cause I can't, for <laughs> some reason, I just imagine you on a beach with the same shades. <laughs> That's funny. So, you just had to take like a you day. Mm -hmm. What is your go to? Um, honestly. What is Sabrina's go to day? Go to like day? day is doing something really like, like a crazy activity because I'm an adrenaline junkie. Okay. So, I'm like, we're either going to go like skydiving Do you or like. Roller like what? Do you like roller coasters? Love roller coasters. I can't do Oh, really? My stomach drops to my butt. <laughs> I told my dad when I was like eight or something and I could I was finally tall enough to ride rides because I've always been short I was like dad you know what I can't marry someone who doesn't like roller coasters Dang. 
and that stuck with me. If you don't like roller coasters, as a deal breaker off the board. Oh, hundred percent. Because look, my thing is again, I'm an adrenaline junkie. So if they don't even like roller coasters, they're not gonna do like to do half the other stuff I like to That's do. True. And I, for me, like the perfect day would literally be doing something that I haven't done before that's like super like once in a lifetime because to me those are the moments you feel the most alive. That's ooh. Alright. Mm -hmm. Answer this for me. Yes. Because I've gotten a lot of I wanna say hate. I'm just gonna <laughs> definitely gotten a lot of different comments. I wanna uh -huh. go skydiving. Yeah. But I've mm -hmm. always what I would joke about, I would say I wanna skydive without the parachute. So just suicide? No. But no. I mean okay. And I know it's not reality. I know it's not real. I know it's not possible, unfortunately, but I would always want to try like a, uh, what's his name, Tom Cruise, like a Tom Cruise stunt. Do you know how he all does these crazy stuff? Yeah. Like, okay, so I was thinking if you skydive, right, mm -hmm. without the parachute, and you just have someone else like jump out the plane to come get mm -hmm. you. I mean, yeah, but you run the risk of like timing. I know that. You're not gonna fall the same. I wouldn't, would I do it? Or just possible. get like a squirrel Maybe. suit, and then when you get to a certain like What's altitude, that? you can just. So it's not technically a parachute. You're still free falling for pretty long, but at least something catches you. Okay. Yeah, so I've had that crazy idea. See, I know, <laughs> I know it's not. Good. Or just do it into like. Well, actually, water would probably break your bones. Do it into like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess in that with that altitude, if it was like a helicopter and you weren't going like super mm -hmm. high, maybe you could jump into like the ocean. See, but I feel I like your bones would still break. I want to. Skydive. I feel like I'm not afraid of skydiving. Yeah. Oh, I have lesson. It's so fun. I don't like I want to do it. Yeah. But roller coasters, I just have not gotten over that. The sensation is not like. Funny. You do feel that though at the start of it when you first jump out of the plane. But that's what I mean. Like, I want to have fun on roller coasters. Mm. How can someone that wants to have fun, like, how do they adapt to it? Do you know? Like, is there a way to help someone? Who I mean, I still get like it? that when I haven't been on roller coasters for a while. Like, you still get kind of like that stomachy feeling and anxiety. <laughs> but it's like anything. Like, you just need to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a gymnast, right? So, like, yeah, sometimes you do a backflip on the beam and you'd split it, which is like when you literally like your feet don't land and it like. But you have to get over it. Like, if you don't do it again, mm -hmm. then you're always gonna have that fear. I so, but then you get it the next time and it's like a perfect like back handspring on the beam. And you're like, oh my god.